You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum, and the Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Oopsie, I forgot to turn the camera on. (laughs) Well, good morning and hello, kids and cubs, and welcome to season three and episode number 154 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryer Media Network. Today, recording day is Monday, July 3rd, 2023. Uh, I do not know what the weather is going to be like here at the Beaver Lodge today because I did not look it up. So, so far, (laughs) it's a day. (laughs) Uh, it's um uh we'll we'll get into it uh and with me as always is my dear friend mr grizzly uh and of course i'm your host the eager beaver pronouns he him hey mr beaver hey see i'm even flipping flipping things here uh it's been a morning already. <laughs> of course, a big thank you goes to our podcast's founding sponsors, The Pepper Master, The Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, and CanadianTarot.com. We have a special Monday morning beaver bite, perhaps. We do not know how much gas we have on the tank. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll do what we can. <laughs> uh, before we go any further, um, let's do our most important thing. Say hello to you, uh, Mr. Grizzly, and ask how your mental health is doing today. Well, good morning, Mr. Beaver. I just woke up. Um, honest to goodness, like when I sent you the link this morning, I had been up for about three minutes. Mm. I... Um, yeah, I, I slept in. Uh, what can I say? You know what? Uh, um, sometimes it happens. <laughs> and I, I think in my head, uh, I was like, well, today's a holiday. So my subconscious was like, you can sleep longer, dude. You don't have to get up. And then it was like, no, I have to get up. I have a show. We got a show to do. So, yep. yeah. Link time, um, 644. Yeah. When, when, yeah. when I'm uh, fully awake, which might happen some at some point during the show i will uh, i'll let you know but between now and then i think i'm doing okay all right all right i think i'm doing uh, okay from my end i wish i could say the same i've had a um weird weekend as uh, the kids know i haven't been feeling my best um uh i had food poisoning uh one day i uh, was seemingly fine but weak the second and then the next um yeah, <laughs> it was still the tummy, but let's say it was the other end. 
let's leave it at that. Mm. Uh, and so I was pretty, uh, depleted, uh, all weekend, uh, did not do much work. I took some time to be kind to myself. Uh, but, uh, on Canada day itself, um, I slept, well, basically the night before my regular usual sleep. And then I think I slept about seven hours during the day Mm. in three different shifts. And I went to bed at my regular time and slept a full night full night i haven't slept that much in 24 hours since i had the the the, the second covid shot that like zonked me out yeah. uh, so yesterday i woke up super rested super rested and i was like you know at the computer and i was doing a couple of things and i thought you know what it's like I think I'm going to go play tennis today. How'd that work out? And then I started looking at some tennis times and I saw one that was like for 1230. And I said, well, let me eat first and, you know, see how that goes. And if the match is still there and, uh, about two hours after I woke up, it was like, oh yeah, I'm not doing anything today. <laughs> oh my God. Who was I kidding thinking I could play tennis? I wouldn't even be able, I wouldn't even be able to get my leg up over the crossbar of my bike to be able to bike. to the tennis. I was, there was nothing. <laughs> going on. Uh, later in the evening, like around the afternoon, like maybe around three o'clock or so, um, uh, there's an arts festival here going on, uh, arts and crafts. So we went and we walked through that and uh, that was cool because it was in a park and, you know, I could walk a little bit and then sit on a bench. And <laughs> I I was like very, 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 well, I mean, there wasn't much food in me for after three days. So understandably, I was, <laughs> I didn't have a lot of get up and go. Um, but yeah, uh, today though, I am feeling well. I had uh, said uh, as the day went on, um, you know, the, the eating the, the bland food the last two or three days in little quantities, settling my stomach and every that, all that, uh, all that worked. And uh, yesterday I was able to have an actual meal, supper. And so now I'm good. Problem is, is that I've been up since 2 a.m. Because <laughs> I slept so much. It caught up to me the day after. That so, does happen, right? So I'm, act I'm actually a little sleepy right now. Actually, about 30 minutes before going on, I was having some really big yawns that if I was like swimming, I would have swallowed the whole lake. <laughs> okay. Like, you know, those yawns where you're like your mouth, you could like stretches like a cobra and you could like eat a rabbit. <laughs> I was like, oh man. Well, yeah. Um, I've, I've been there. Um, yeah. <laughs> when I wake up, I'll let you know. <laughs> so we're both in a state of semi sleepiness right now, kids. Yes. <laughs> um, good uh, Monday morning to you, Kit Tabby G, Kit P and C Bio, Kit Mike H, Kit Elaine, Kit Linda M. Who else do we have with us? Ah, Kit Dharma Karma, Kit Ellen, Kit Elaine, of course. So lovely to see all of you this morning with us. Thank you so much for joining us. And um, also, I saw on uh, one of our feeds, uh, Kit Wishful Son, uh, which is the Kit um, who, uh, during our Canada Day uh, podcast, uh, bought you the beer. And so yes. left us a message uh, and, and said, hey, Mr. Beaver, which nope. I could have treated you for Canada Day 2 next time. More than, more than bought me a beer. She actually paid my entire tab. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So thank you. Like, that was unexpected. Like, so uh, I called a server over, and I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm ready to head out. I'll pay my bill. She goes, no, it's taken care of. I'm like, what? She goes, yeah, you know the, the woman, the young woman who brought you a beer? I go, yeah. And she paid your whole tab. I'm like, oh, well, that was most unexpected. Thank you ever so much. Like, wow, that was a big treat. I was not expecting that. So that, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Well, we have definitely the best kits because uh, uh, as well, we got two tips. Oh, well, cool. So we got, we got Fantastic. tip on Friday to close off the month of June. 
from none other as then then I don't take a look this right here again wishful oh. well thank you our cup runneth over indeed it does thank you so very much for your generosity that is wow thank you yeah. thank you thank you thank you thank you uh and not only not only kid wishful son but after our canada day kit bow also so, oh, maybe i'll blow that up a little bit for the people watching oh, i can see it there thank you for thank being you for... my bestest audio emotional support once again happy canada day Thanks, Bo. Appreciate Aww. that. We really do. We really, really do. We have the best kids. We have the best kids. We have the best kids. <laughs> we really do. They're so good to us. They're so sweet. So, so and thank you for asking uh, how I'm doing. Thank you so much. I, I, I really appreciate it. Uh, I am doing much better today. Thank you. Good stuff. Good stuff. So let's start off the show with uh, something funny. Yes. And then we're going to get serious right away. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. So, yeah, I, I got something serious for you. So this, this is uh, 2021, <laughs> 2023. <laughs> the only thing that I didn't changed get a, is the beer. <laughs> that's it. I didn't get a 2022 picture. Um, so that I got to start it off with a little bit of humor because I'm, I'm going to get dark on you here. You didn't expect this. You didn't see this coming. Um, but this is for um, those of us across the country who um, are concerned about the state of healthcare in Canada mm. and especially concerned when it comes to uh, conservative premiers who are doing everything they can to privatize it as quickly as possible, both uh, Daniel Smith and 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 uh, here in Ontario, um, Doug Ford, and this is from an American um, Twitter user, and I'm just going to post this on the screen. We'll look at it for a second, then I'll read it out loud for the the audio only listeners. And well, it kind of says it all. It sums it up. For those of you watching at home, take a couple of seconds, give that a go, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna narrate it for those who are listening to the audio only version of this podcast. And this uh, was, I guess, a day or two ago that this was posted. This is just a screen cap. My wife has cancer. It took five months to wipe out twenty years of life savings, and that was with that was with insurance. The experience has turned me into a hateful, bitter person. We did everything we were told. We went to college, got degrees, avoided credit card debt, spent wisely, saved a nice chunk of money in savings accounts and retirement accounts, and minded our own business. The USA healthcare system took all of our savings in retirement and forced us to refinance our house so that we lost 15 years of equity. This is a country I'm supposed to be proud of. I hate this system and anyone that defends it. You need to understand that this is what we will have in this country if we allow conservative premiers to continue to privatize every damn thing with, by the way, our public money that they're doing it. They're building private hospitals in Ontario with public funds. And it's important that we let people know that this is taking place because that message right there is not unique in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. It's not unique. That, that message is ever so common. The highest percentage of personal bankruptcies in the United States of America is because of medical debt. Mm -hmm. Medical debt. And that fucker Doug Ford and that biatch Daniel Smith are doing everything they can to put us into that situation. And they're doing it with our money. And that, my friends, is evil. Mm. Mm. let's take a breath on that and think about it for a second if we allow this to continue we will find ourselves in the same situation and look as it is currently right now retirement is not an option for me so if they privatize health care and i get sick then what i go into debt 
in my twilight years because somebody will profit from it somewhere? Yeah. No thanks. No thanks. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know what to add. Well, I mean, I know that's heavy to start the show, but it was important that, that you know, it's important that we talk about this. It's important to remind people that this is the way we are headed if we don't stand up against these tyrannical, profit-motivated governments. They don't care about us. They only care about money. And if you're voting conservative, remember, you're not actually voting for the Conservative Party of Canada. You're voting for the Reform Party of Canada under another name. I know it's heavy. And it's Monday. But it's foggy out here in the nation's capital. And sometimes that fog that hangs overhead hangs over my own personal brain. And, well, Tavi G's got it right there. Healthcare and education, going, going, gone. Or you ignore your body and don't seek, seek health care at all. And, and this is the other thing, right? The NHS in the United Kingdom, the national health system, which has been the paragon, paragon, is that the right word? I think that's the right word, uh, of, of what health care should be, how it, it, it supports everyone equally. And they want to design a system where it's like uh, people with money get to the front of the line, people without money, well, you know. Too bad, so sad. Charles, you Farley, you're on your own. Hmm. Indeed. I, I don't, I don't, I didn't have anything at all prepared for that, so I, I, I can't add anything no. or, or expand, yeah. unfortunately. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. You don't need to. I mean, sometimes I just have stuff to say and, and I say what I say. And, you know, I don't always expect a, a comment from from you, uh, you know, because sometimes it's just I, I, I literally will throw something out there that's a little bit, holy crap, I didn't. You know, and, and that's why I said I'm springing this on you. You didn't see this coming as a, as a, as a precursor and a forewarning. <laughs> right? Sometimes, uh, sometimes I can be a little heavy, and this morning I was, because when I read that, it was like, oh my goodness, we have to talk about this. This is an important subject, and if we don't, if we don't stand up against, like I said, tyrannical, profit-motivated governments, we're going to find ourselves in that same situation. And again, that's not a unique story in the United States of America. It's all too common. Who wants that? Hmm. No, I hear you. I mean, it's uh, it's just so contrary to the social contract. It it absolutely is. It's just it, uh, and they look at us and they they're they're smiling while they're doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the epitome of evil. They're promising it's going to do the opposite of what it's going to do. Yes. I... <sighs> yep. <laughs> that's I know it's a heavy subject, but... No, because when you, when you add it, when you add it, that is mm -hmm. bad enough, but when you add it to the climate change mm -hmm. denialism, right? It just... Like over the course of the weekend, right? You're seeing it literally in Atlantic Canada here because um, in Nova Scotia in particular, the government has moved away from their carbon plan, which made it so that the federal backstop didn't need to be imposed. So now it does. So now they're complaining about that because then you know, along with that have come the new uh, uh, fuel standards, the clean fuel standards. Um and you've got all these people, you know, that you've been seeing all these photos of like people filling their gas tank, like fill it up before the weekend, before like, you know, all mm -hmm. that goes up and, you know, you can't, you know, so you got all these like petrosexuals, you know, taking pictures of themselves, yeah. sticking a Once nozzle again. into a hole right in front of the children. 
hold on to that image for in your second for uh, hold on to that image in your mind for a second right <laughs> like this you know right in front of the children grooming those cars being all <sighs> serving their petrosexuality down our throats <laughs> it's really good you keep going you're on a great roll here <laughs> you're killing me with this i love it i love it so much just saying just saying. Just saying. Just saying. This telling us, oh my God, 14 extra cents. Like, and, and here's the thing, right? Because they're they're conflating both of them, right? The, the clean fuel standard, mm. they're calling that carbon tax too, right? The clean fuel standard at the, at the moment doesn't require anybody to do anything above what it is that they are doing now, so long as they're meeting what they should mm. be doing now before 2025. They're telling you that this is like another carbon tax coming on. It's like, yes, corporations are going to have to do stuff in order to reduce their emissions. This is almost like a cap and trade system on top of the carbon tax, but the carbon tax mm -hmm. wasn't covering all emitters, like especially the large ones. So this one does, right? So it's sort of the, you know, they're going to exchange credits and you know, and all that kind of stuff. And there's going to be a cap on emissions and all that kind of stuff, right? So it's a clean fuel standard. So of course, there could be some costs associated with it. And of course, right, those will eventually be passed down, but it's not going to be a tax. No, no. Well, and, and those who use less get, get a larger rebate too, right? Right. So, <clears throat> I mean, this is the, like, these, these are all the things, right? The, these, all these concepts are inherently conservative. You get to choose how much tax you pay by choosing how much you consume. Mm -hmm. That is an inherently <laughs> conservative an inherently ideology. Conservative ideology. Small C. It really conservative, is. right? Yeah. Yes. Like this. It's a low bureaucrat low bureaucracy system. You pay at price point. And you decide how much or I guess and you can make choices. There are alternatives available to you. Some of them have some government subsidies. If you want to buy an EV vehicle, there are government subsidies. If you want to insulate your house, there are EV subsidies. If you want to put a heat pump on your house, there are government subsidies. Right? You want to buy a better water tank. You want to buy a, you know, all these things that you could do to save energy. You want to trigger, you want to change your windows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. All these programs that are available, right? You want to change, upgrade your insulation from whatever it is to like a spray foam or something. You can do that. Right. It's just, so, you know, there's a, the, we have Kitlin Amir. We had a perfectly functional cap and trade system until Dougie canceled it and gave us the carbon tax. The tax in Ontario is his fault. Exactly. And that's the thing, yep. wherever provinces that you're in, if you aren't paying a carbon tax, that's the fault of your damn premier who won't, who was basically, who's basically telling you that they will not do the basic minimum that is required to row in the same direction as the rest of the team. So the federal government has to come in and said, well, you know what, since, uh, we have to make sure that everybody can still breathe at the end of the day. Thank you. Because the government's main job, apparently, so they keep on telling us, is to keep the citizens safe. And it seems that the mm -hmm. premiers don't want to cooperate with that. We have had to put in a backstop. Well, especially when you consider this. Yeah. And that for sitting on $22 billion that he won't spend. And you know, let's talk, we'll talk about that. But when you add the first thing with all the health, mm -hmm to the fact that we're basically, I mean, the country's burning and you still have some people going, oh my God, don't put a tax on carbon. Please don't put on a fuel standard now, not at this time when the economy might be teetering. And, and you know, it's never a good time, right? Because when the economy's coming out of recession, oh, oh, we're just coming out of recession. Don't hobble us now. And when the economy's going full tilt, hey, things are going well. Don't do anything to hobble it now. Right? It's never a right time. It's never a right time. Never. Right? It's never right time. So, uh, <laughs> so you add those two together and then while this is going on, you've got uh, TV Ontario who just aired a segment called is Canada becoming uninsurable in mm -hmm. 2022 weather events accounted for $3.1 billion of insured losses in Canada. That's up from just 40 million in 2008 from 14 million in insured losses to 3.1 billion in 14 years. 
And in the last three years, house insurance prices in wow. Canada have gone up 14%. Is Canada becoming jump. uninsurable? So house insurance prices have raised, have gone up way more than carbon tax has taken away. Mm. So carbon tax and fuel standards are seeking to reduce the number of wildfires and floods and drought and now tornadoes. Because of yeah, we had a tornado hit. warning the whole weekend, right? And a very bad one hit in Alberta. Oh, really? I didn't know oh, that. Oh, yeah. Tore a... 20 kilometer path. Wow. A 30 kilometer path, I think, and was uh, touched ground for 20 minutes. We had five of them hit in Ontario. And according oh, to wow. Western University's Northern Tornado Study, apparently climate change is making it so that Canada's tornado, uh, tornado alley is moving east to the more densely populated areas. Great. Wonderful. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. And of course, you know, pulling like all the water out of the ground is making the earth shift the axis. So then again, you know, like this, our climate is changing that yeah. way, not only by, but, you know, we're facing a different direction now. <laughs> and it's like a one and a third, Yay, longer summer. One and a third inches, like per year or something. Like, like. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no, yeah, let's just pump, let's just keep pumping stuff out of the core of the earth. What could go wrong? It's, well, that you know, this is one of the. I, I, I asked all that a question. Grass. I asked that question years ago. I said, "So, when they pump the oil out of the ground, do they replace it with anything?" Well, they must. I go, "No, I don't want speculation. I want an answer. Do they replace it with anything?" And they're like, "Turns out, no, they don't." So, let me see if I understand this. Why are earthquakes happening over there in that part of the world that have never happened before? Because they're siphoning all of this. Hang on a second siphoning all of this oil out of the ground but the weight on top of the ground is not changed right mm -hmm. so if you pull out stuff from the supporting structure why do we have earthquakes in the other part of the world why does the you know the the the, the climate change occur like it it's all relational mm -hmm. it's all it's you know the the chaos theory of mathematics a butterfly flaps its wings in southeast asia and it affects what happens here in ottawa yeah absolutely. because it really does yeah yeah and so when you you have these people that really 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 want you to get mad that prime minister trudeau is doing stuff yes putting a carbon tax and putting in some architecture to make sure that you got to meet our international commitments and putting a clean fuel standard to actually reduce the amount of carbon in the air now and putting in some architecture um, so that in the law there's stuff that doesn't let people fall through the cracks as we're going to transition and stuff. And they're complaining about all of it mm. and they never say a peep about the insurance companies. Well, California, you can't insure a new home now. You can't. They, they, they've pulled out. The biggest insurance companies have pulled out of California. Yeah. and So it'll have to be state-run. And why you don't get a rebate for the clean fuel standard, right? Nobody's going to get a rebate from that. That'll just be costs that are passed down eventually. Or not. Mm -hmm. If companies want to be more competitive, you know, because that's a way to gain a competitive edge. It's not down all of them. Um, because they'll be getting savings too, mm -hmm. eventually from that as well. And they've got a much longer timeline. Um, but uh, yeah, sure. Absolutely. Yep, yep. Go ahead and do that. Uh, Mr. Grizzly's going to go get some coffee there. Um, so uh, they've got a, so companies have a much longer timeline to absorb those costs and then they have the benefit of amortization and all that kind of stuff. And that's why the government is doing these loan programs. Some of the, a lot of them are interest free for X number of years. And so yes, you have to front the money a bit to do the work and, <clears throat> but, once the work has been done and it's been assessed uh, that uh, the changes that you've done are going to bring this much or the targeted amount in uh, greenhouse gas uh, reduction reductions from your home, uh, then the rest of the money is dispersed and, uh, you know, uh, and you have it interest free for X number of years and certain cities have a municipal program that goes on top of that uh, as well. So you can uh, definitely get some help in doing that. Um, if you have a, 
uh, the means to be able to front the money for the couple of months uh, that'll be required for the, you know, the work to get done and uh, the paperwork to go through the system uh, for to, to get your reimbursement. Um, but they're valuable programs, right? Because, you know, I think transportation itself is the second highest amount uh, source of GHGs uh, production in Canada. But our homes and our buildings uh, are up there. I think they're the third or fourth. Um, but this is something that, you know, you know, you can change things for the construction code and building codes when you're building new buildings or, you know, when you're doing retrofits of old ones. But everybody's individual home is a project that someone has to take on themselves somehow, right? And be proactive in doing. Same thing for, you know, apartment buildings. And, you know, it, it has to be the property owner that'll want to do mm. that and take that on. Um, because, you know, I mean, this is, you know, I know the conservatives like to say that thing all the time that says, you know, the Trudeau loves China, right? Because well, if this was China, you could like, you know, divide the city in like little squares and say, okay, we're doing this entire block. Whether you're ready or not, yeah. you know, because we're doing this block and then we're doing this block and we're doing this block and it's incredibly efficient. And yes, if you want to get things done quickly, yeah, that would be really great. Unfortunately, there's other things that come with it. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, right. <laughs> and people keep on forgetting when they uh, play that quote right the second part of it where he says you know like this yes like stephen harper would have dreamed of having this right <laughs> that's the thing they, they, they only play the first part it's like wait a second wait a second yes he did say that but if you play the whole thing in context Yes. And not just pick and choose. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, you're being disingenuous when you only show that part because he wasn't talking about himself. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Like From PNC Bio here. Not China. Beijing. Beijing. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, you're putting it all, all together. And so they don't care about the environment. Mm hmm. And they don't really care about your pocketbook because if they did, they'd care about all of it, mm -hmm. all the places where you're right. Things are going up. And then they would sit there and they would think, well, the cost of not being able to afford insurance and the rising cost of insurance is probably way more than the cost of the carbon tax. So maybe I should focus there instead, but no, because the cost of, of insurance doesn't allow them to attack Trudeau. You know, insurance and, and, they, right. and they can't change it unless they decide to go for a standardized, uh, nationalized provincial system like they have in British Columbia when it comes to auto insurance, right? Right. So where you get a rebate at the end of the year if you didn't, you know, if if things drop, you get a rebate in in British Columbia. Yeah. I'm like, what? A rebate from my insurance company? Mine went up. I haven't had an accident since 1985. Mm. Yet my insurance went up. So they're fostering a climate, pun not intended, in which you are mm -hmm. more likely to get sick and have less money to be able to afford to pay the health care because all of that's going to insurance, if you're lucky enough to be able to have a home to insure. But I mean, even if you're renting, you want to insure the contents, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if you happen to be living in a flood valley or tornado alley, not getting it. Sorry. You're out of luck. You're on your own. And then should you get injured in the climate disaster? Well, now you got to show your credit card to get the health care and you have less money to pay for it because, well, first you paid it on insurance, which. Mm -hmm. This is what or on, they want. Or on having to, Or on having to rebuild. Well, that or too, have, yeah. They're well, okay with like, paying those costs. Yeah. They're okay with you. They're, they're okay with that. that they're ask okay with. anybody. But, but that carbon tax, though. Oh, 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 oh. Ask anybody who's been through a fire if the content insurance they had in their, in their building was enough. And every time they'll say, no, because what you forget about. Sure, okay, replace your TV, your stereo, your furniture, your dining room. But wait, I have to replace all my cutlery, all my cleaning supplies, all of my clothing, Q-tips, razor blade. 
all of those, and it all adds up. And I've, I've known friends who've gone through this, and they're like, I thought $50,000 content would have been enough. It wasn't even close. Nope. It isn't close. It doesn't, it barely scratches the surface because it's everything needs to be replaced. When you walk out with the clothes on your back, you think, okay, well, you know, uh, then all of a sudden it's like, wait, wait a second. I need blankets, I pillows, opener. sheets, a, a can opener, cutlery, uh, cleaning supplies, clean it. All of those things, they all add up because they all have a cost. Right? Soap, I need, I, oh shit, I don't have, or shampoo. Well, not in my case, obviously, but you know. When I had a beard, I did. I bought yeah. shampoo for the first time in years, yeah. right? Right. So all of those things add up. So beard, so shampoo, conditioner, blow dryer. Oh, damn. I didn't even think about that. Of course you don't think about it because it's not top of mind because those are everyday things you use every day. A brush, a toothbrush, toothpaste, mouthwash. Yeah. All of those things add up. And when you forget those things, you suddenly remember them when you realize you don't have any of them anymore. And this is what happens to a friend of mine who just lost everything in the wildfires in Nova Scotia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But his is tenfold because it's not just himself, it's his wife and his two children. Everything needs to be replaced. Everything. Everything. Yep. And it all adds up. Yeah. No, uh, we've uh, very, I think I remember, well, I, I barely remember because I was about four. So you don't remember all that much. But uh, where we lived, we mm -hmm. lived in an apartment building and there was a fire. And yeah, we um, had to start over. It's a... Uh, it's weird. <laughs> well, I mean, let's, let's let's just let's just go with a simple case in point with just what we have in frame here. So that whiteboard behind your head would have to be replaced. Yep. Your headphones, the mic, the mic wrap. Um all of the CDs I have behind me? Yep. Forget about it. Yep. Right? The thousands of records, like come on. Pictures you know, those, the pictures can be reprinted, but the frames that they came in, I have to replace all of that. So it's, it all adds up exponentially. Little things we don't think about on a daily basis, and all of a sudden when they're not there, it's like, oh, shoot. Uh, mm. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah Tavi, my, my, uh, my car insurance went up by uh, uh, $50 a month. Went from 125 to 175. I haven't had an accident or a claim since 1985. Hmm. But all of a sudden, I'm paying more. And, and because my vehicle is a lease, I have to have top-of-the-line insurance. I can't have just basic. I have to have everything that is blood, you know, readily available. So, yeah, I, I have no say in the matter. Mm. None. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the high cost of everything is is crushing us. Yeah. So yeah, when you add it all together, mm -hmm. right? See, th this is the analysis I wish would happen. Because if you doesn't. take these policies and if you voted for them and if they enacted them and if you follow them down the line, game them out, where do you end up? Mm -hmm. Why is nobody having this conversation in, in the mainstream media? It's like, if you want an informed electorate, like this, why not talk about where these policies end up? Mm. What would happen if they were implemented? You know, it, you know that's, that's a really good topic of discussion because you're right. It does not get discussed. And, and oftentimes they're just used as a, as a cudgel to try and attack the, the other side. And I'm like, hang, hang on a second here. What exactly is being done here? Why is this taking place? Why are we not discussing that? Yeah, what I was—I uh, know I've talked about this before, but when we were getting twenty-four-seven hour, twenty-four-seven news, I thought that that's what we were going to be getting. We'd have more time to do that type of stuff, right, and go into stuff like this rather than just repeating the same fifteen minutes over and again, over again, four times an hour. And that's what it is, right? That's a, that, you know, like if we if we back to uh, the nineteen nineties. And, and we take a look at the uh, GST that was enacted by um, uh, Brian Mulroney. 
everybody hated the GST, right? Everybody still hates the GST. Now it's the HST, Harmonized Sales Tax, in, in some provinces where they've merged the GST and the PST. Instead of having two taxes, just one tax. In Ontario, it's 15%? Yeah, 15%. Or is it 13%? It, 13, it was 15, 13, it went down no, to 13. Yeah. yeah. And everybody hates it. And we do remember how John Nunziata uh, was kicked out of the Liberal Party of Canada when he asked um, Prime Minister Cretchen at the time, you campaigned on canceling the hated GST. Why have you not done it? And instead of responding, he just kicked him out of the party and disbanded his riding because that's democracy. But here's the thing. He came to the realization that the rest of us came to was what was needed. And Brian Mulroney, who, who once claimed, he says, I will be remembered for helping to save Canada with the GST. Mm -hmm. And as much as I hated him for saying that, I can't disagree. He was right. He was right. Yeah, because it was, he was, it right. was because of the GST that Paul Martin was able to do what he did. Precisely. That's why the balance was budget. Uh, the budget was balanced for the first time in decades, right? Yep. So, and it is smarter to tax consumption. It, it just is. is. But we just, we, we don't get the explanation. Like, all anybody ever heard was, it's a new tax and we're going to have to pay it. Yes, but why has it been enacted? Why did it get voted on in Parliament? Why is it a thing? Well, let's, let's break it down and explain it. And there was a tax because, that we were paying. Mm, there was a manufacturer's tax that was embedded, that got removed. Right. So the tax became visible so that we could see it, number one. Always better. And it had prices on a lot of things too. It did. Right, because the manufacturer's tax was higher, if memory serves. Yes. Yeah, higher but on fewer things. It was, yes. It was it was was it twelve percent and then the GST was seven mm percent? -hmm. So it was actually a drop, but it was yeah. on you're right, fewer things. But yeah, and then the GST was on goods and services. So by putting on services right. you could reduce it on goods. So you know it's and then there was, and it had a rebate. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, GST rebate, that's right? right. <laughs> and it had a rebate, kind of like the carbon regulatory fee, which was again, right? It's like you can't put on a tax and rebate. So, like, really? Because conservatives, uh, if I remember correctly, that was kind of your idea, and the GST was actually a tax. <laughs> Whereas the carbon tax is not. It's a regulatory fee. It's more like the acid rain stuff. <laughs> Which, again, was conservative. Right? Mm. Acid rain was also Mulroney. Yeah. Yes, it was. Yeah, like, he was These the are your ideas. Guy. These are your ideas. It's like They're literally mad because liberals took their ideas. <laughs> Must be. <laughs> well, NC Bio is correct here. Yes, uh, there's no question in that. Uh, that that is true. Uh, what what he's saying: taxing consumption uh, taxes poor folks harder. This is true. This is true. Uh, mm -hmm. But it does hit everybody uh, across the board. Mm -hmm. um, now, something that that that. But we also I have was some, talking we, with Bridget. There's, there's also sorry. There's also some GST exempt items because of that that took. Yes. To take into in, in, in consideration when it was designed. But yes, it does. But I was talking, uh, so I was talking with Bridget on, on uh, Canada Day about how we we're sitting on the porch having a beer and I was talking about how in, in Scandinavian countries, they have um, fines that are uh, adjusted to income. Right. So a speeding ticket, a parking ticket, you know, a traffic violation. It's like, well, if you're a low income person, your tax, your, your fine is considerably lower than somebody who's a high income person. They're like, you know, you can't apply a $95 parking ticket across the board and think that hits everybody equally because right. it doesn't. Right. A $95 parking ticket to me is a, Jesus, I can't, I don't need this mm -hmm. $95 parking ticket to somebody who's just making ends meet is that's tough. And for somebody who has money and it's just a, the cost of parking to them. Mm -hmm. As we had talked about when I, I had said at one point in time, there was a gentleman that I knew uh, who, who ran up $20,000 in parking tickets. Mm -hmm. And when he went to pay it, they're like, that can't be correct. He goes, yeah, no, sounds right. 
because he was earning so much money and he didn't care. To him, it was just the cost of parking. He just parked wherever he wanted. He didn't care. Mm -hmm. And you were on a show with him recently. (laughs) (laughs) Right? Mm -hmm. And and irony of ironies, it's like I had told you that story some time ago. And then then when you're on the show with him, I'm texting you going, remember that story I told you? It's him. That guy right there. That was the guy. Right. You know, and it was literally because there was so much, he was earning so much money at the time. It didn't matter to him. That was the cost of parking as far as he was concerned. Right. Yeah. 95 bucks. Yeah. That's what it cost to park. Didn't give a damn. Right. Didn't affect him negatively. Didn't impact his, his day to day. Didn't impact him in any way, shape or form. He's like, I got to renew my place. Uh, 20 grand. Yeah. That sounds about right. And you're like, what? This can't be right. No, that's, no, no, that's, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So we need to change that system so that folks who um, are having a hard time making ends meet don't get punished with the same brush that somebody who looks at it and goes, yeah, that's just the cost of doing business. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, a $95 parking ticket is a lot of money to me. Yeah. To some people, it's like, it's, it's, it's whether or not they eat next week. Mm -hmm. And to other people, that's a cup of coffee. Indeed. All right. A um, little bit of a mood switch here. First of all, okay. we saw in the chat that uh, Kit Jillian is, I believe, starting a new job today. Oh, I did. I read I that not, correctly. It passed by that. a while ago. Uh, but uh, if that is indeed the case, uh, please uh, have a wonderful, wonderful first day. Uh, Yes, I will be working as a home support worker, so a few mixed feelings about entering a workplace that's a for-profit company. Understandably. Understandably. Mm -hmm. Starting a new job next week. There you go. And um, Kit James uh, says that uh, we have a new fan. We have a new fan. And uh, you know I'm partial to redheads. (laughs) Little ginger. (laughs) It's kitty. Kitty cat. <laughs> yeah. How cute is that? A putty tat. I taught, I taught. A putty tat. A little putty tat. <laughs> oh. um, ah, we love that. It's quite we adorable. That. that is completely adorable. That guy, and according to James, snuggles like a champ. All right. Snuggles like All a right. champ. All right. I like that. <laughs> um, All right. All right. Um, for people who uh, love cheering on Team Canada, uh, the World Aquatics Championships are about uh, to start. And uh, Let's as go you know, summer. Team Canada is... Maggie. Yeah. Yes. Penny. Josh. Uh, you know. All of them. The whole gang. The whole gang. L- let's go, man. L- hell They're going to kick some butt. <laughs> They're going to kick little, some butt. Bring home some medals. Uh, I well, think, and our uh, buddy Devin are- should be covering it is yeah 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 uh they're in japan so he's looking forward to some uh, 7-eleven food again (laughs) (laughs) nice nice Ah, so yeah that's gonna be great uh yeah we need to have him back we keep on saying that but but he's he's just traveling all over the place the guy he's a busy fella right well like after we interviewed him like this and he went to the olympics right when he uh Mm -hmm. because the the, was the winter ones no the summer ones Summer, summer Olympics. Summer ones got delayed. Yeah, so summer. when he went, yeah, when he ended up going to the summer ones, they gave him swimming and track. Mm. Swimming is in the first week of the Olympics. It's the marquee yep. event. And then track, and track and field is, is the last. marquee event in the second. I guess they gave him yeah. both the assignments. Yeah. So he was a busy fella. Way to go, Devin. Good on Love you, your man. <laughs> right. Uh, so yeah, he's been, uh, he's been doing quite well for himself. Thank you very much. Um, uh, he's very good at his job too. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. He, he deserves it. He absolutely deserves it. But, uh, you know, it's, you know, he knew he was going, but I'm not sure he knew what his assignments were at the time. And, you know, it's like when you're handed, uh, yeah, you're getting like mm-hmm. the, the, the gold ticket for the yeah, first, they week were delayed by a year gold ticket for the, yeah, the second week too. So run with it and and that's not all he covered of course right. but uh you know those mm-hmm. are those are the big ones so and, and the ones well yeah because it was supposed Canadians to be the 2020s right 
and it was pushed back to 2021. So everything got thrown around and, and yeah, and, and our, our team Canada and, and remember in the interview, he said, our women are going to kick butt. And wow, did they ever he predicted that he <laughs> called that one. Eh? Yep. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yep, yep, absolutely. Um, so, uh, yes, we are definitely cheering on Team Canada at the World Aquatics Championships. And um, also, Wimbledon starts today. Yeah, it's late, though. Like, it's, yeah. it's late because n- normally Wimbledon is June. Yes. Pre Canada Day. And, and it, yes, know. they, they changed the schedule to add a, a, an extra week or two of uh, grass uh, because the season was so short okay. to, to, for, to help people adjust. Um, and, uh, so yeah, uh, it's, we have nine, I think Canadians will be playing mm-hmm. in all, uh, which is pretty darn cool. Uh, Milos Raonic is, uh, back in, uh, he got, he, they gave him a, a, a special protected ranking. Um, so he got a direct entry and it seems that he's got a pretty good first draw. So there's a good chance he might uh, win his first round match. And, uh, Carol Jao, who got out of the qualifications at the age of 28 to make her first ever grand slam, uh, got a bit of luck too. Uh, the player that she was supposed to play originally, uh, had to pull out. So it was a lucky loser situation where one of the people in the last round of qualifying that had the highest level ranking gets to not be eliminated and come into the main draw. So rather than playing someone who's ranked uh, above her, she might be playing someone that's ranked a little closer to her, even be maybe even below her in the first round, which is cool. very rare when you're 166 in the world <laughs> in the first round of Wimbledon to play someone lower not common. than you. Yes. So you get a very lucky draw if that happens. So chances are she may even be uh, win a first round in her first ever Grand Slam. Mm. Well, the odds are definitely oh, greatly improved. Um, so the odds are ever in her favor. Exactly. So uh, Felix Ogialiasim is playing today. Uh, apparently he has a bit of a knee injury, however, which is not great on grass. Mm. because grass is mm. the surface on uh, on clay people slide intentionally and you can slide on grass but at some point there's like a dew point especially in the Stop. early days yeah. where people just the, the mm. legs just like go out from under them <laughs> yeah, you see that a lot in the first days of Wimbledon just all of a sudden boom on your bum so um <laughs> uh and it he happens doesn't have the best knee at the moment so uh, don't may not be a, a, a lengthy Wimbledon for him, even though he's got a good uh, first round draw. Uh, Shapovalov has also playing this morning, also has a good first round draw. Uh, him, it's more of a matter of confidence. Because uh, he he had a, the French Open was almost his best tournament of the year. He hasn't been doing all that great. Mm. Uh, but he often has a terrible yeah, play season as well. It's the, so And then has a better half. So this would be about the time in the second half where he would be having so you never know and, and he does love the grass so it, it may mm. work if it gets uh if he it loves the play. grass man he loves the grass he's Canadian. Man. he loves the grass man. yeah and uh lately annie fernandez will be uh playing on uh, the women's side and she also has a good first round draw um she's been having a little more trouble in singles she's almost uh she dropped into the almost out of the top 100 she was 13th at one point after her run at the u.s open uh the other year um but she's been doing so well in doubles i it's kind of weird it's like all the success she was having in singles kind of transferred to doubles so now i think Mm -hmm. she's trying to try to even them all out um but i mean so long as you're having success somewhere right Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, she almost won a grand slam just a couple of months ago. <laughs> so, so she's not doing terrible for herself. Uh, but uh, yeah, maybe this will be an opportunity to get a couple of a uh, couple of singles matches uh, with confidence under her, her feet uh, for the rest of the season. Because uh, the next grand slam, of course, is the well U.S. Done. Open, right? And then, of mm-hmm. course, we have the, the that's September. The, that's September, and of course, we have before that in August. We have the National Bank Open here. You know, where they're playing at home, and you know. Which isn't a Grand Slam, but it should be, I think. It really should be because it's one of the oldest tennis tournaments in the world. It's actually older than some of the Grand yeah. Slams. Um, but, you know, because the U.S. is under us and is the bigger market. Yeah. But uh, but for the longest time, under it us. was considered. Uh, yes, under us. For the longest time, it was We're the top. We're the top in the relationship. Yes. If it was considered 
<laughs> for the longest time, like the fifth Grand Slam, except, uh, you know, they weren't in the same cities. Uh, but now even like mm-hmm. Indian Wells has sort of taken that over because mm-hmm. it's slightly, it's the week I'm almost after, but it's in the same city. Uh, the men and women are playing mm-hmm. in the same city and they did that that thing that we talked about, the expanded draw to 96 and spreading, spreading it over 12 days rather than seven. Uh, they did that as well for that one. That's the pilot. Uh, so oh, that one's almost being considered now. We keep on getting bumped a little. But uh, but in terms of prestige, though, I think it's the third oldest uh, tennis trophy in the world. This is the Canadian Open. So it's uh, it's not just any prize. It's not just any prize, especially if you're a... Uh, a lover of the history of the game. It's definitely not any prize. So, yes, we have to... Um... Oh, really? Okay. Uh, I guess we have to wrap. Uh... Apologies. I, I, I have to... Uh, yeah. Have to go. <clears throat> okay. Um, all right. Uh, Un- unplanned. Uh, sometimes that happens. Um, you know, life throws you a curveball. You got to swing and see if you can hit it over the fence. So okay. I'm doing my best to do that right now. Okay. Uh, well, kids, uh, that's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver podcast. We hope you love listening to us because we love making this for you. Uh, remember that sharing is caring and word of mouth is priceless. Let your peeps know about us. Uh, because democracy is uh, something that you do. Um, please donate to, to the Red Cross if you have the opportunity. Um, our brothers and sisters need you. Uh, if you really like this podcast, you can find us at the Cryer Media Network, as well as all Beaver Grizzly friendly platforms. Uh, stars and reviews are appreciated. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Reach us on our Facebook at True North Eager Beaver, our Twitter at True Eager, or by email at True North Eager Beaver at gmail.com. And you can subscribe via our pod page, podpage.com slash the True North Eager Beaver. Um, all in lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of the words. Um, there's uh, the QR code if you are happy and watching, if you can uh, scan it, and uh, that will bring you there. Uh, why not subscribe to our True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated YouTube channel? That helps us out big time. And uh, we can't do this without your kind and generous support. So if you feel that we've done a particularly good show, uh, if you're watching, please scan the QR code by Mr. Grizzly's head. And if you're listening, uh, please go to our coffee page. That's coffee, ko-fi.com slash eager beaver, uh, lowercase letters, all in one word. And that's where you can make your donation. Um, from the Beaver Lodge, this is your eager Beaver saying, until next time, dear kids, it can be a tough world out there, so be kind to and gentle with yourself. And uh, Mr. Grizzly, words of wisdom? Buckle up. Buckle up. That's all I got to say. Uh, Do up that seatbelt and drive safely. Okay. Um, all right, uh, Mr. Grizzly, roll the credits. Trying to. My computer's chugging along here. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver media podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum, and the Peppermaster, Hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. kids have a wonderful day that was weird it's everything slowed down at the end that was really strange instead of speeding up it slowed down yep weird okay see ya gotta go bye